Hadrosaur Cress and how diverse they are, another video that could be made in the future, were wide-ranging in their appearance, and none more strange than that of Chindalsaurus, which has had quite the interesting and phallic journey of how they were reconstructed. Meaning Chinda lizards, after where they were found, they lived in and around Cretaceous China in the Jingzhangkou Formation from around 83 to 70 million years ago. The type species of Chindalsaurus spinorhinus was described by one of China's foremost vertebrate paleontologists, paleontologist Yang Zhongzheng, in 1958, with its species name meaning with a nose spine from the Latin spina and Greek for nose, which referred to the distinctive crest found near the snout. The holotype of Chindalsaurus consisted of a partial skeleton with a decently complete skull, with it often being referred to after its discovery as unicorn-like, since the specimen possessed a single and elongated solid bony spike, about 40 centimetres long which was hollow and appeared to have a forked upper end, giving them quite a phallic look, which was not helped by artists who added some inflatable sacs at the spike's base to fit with other hadrosaurs. The full extent of the crest was unknown though, since the skull wasn't entirely complete, with much of the promaxilla being missing above the snout, but it didn't matter too much for reconstructions, since the diversity of hadrosaur crests that had been well established up to that point implied that such a spike was indeed plausible, and paleoartists ended up running with it, even though it was not too seriously investigated. Chindalsaurus did eventually come under some scrutiny regarding their crest, with them in 1990 being re-examined by David Weishampel and Jack Horner, who cast doubt on the presence of the crest, suggesting instead that it was actually a broken nasal bone from the top of the snout that only appeared the way it did from distortion caused by the fossilization process after their death. They went further in claiming that without the distinctive crest to distinguish them, Chindalsaurus was actually just a synonym of the similar, but nonetheless different and crestless hadrosaur Tanius, though further finds threw this conclusion into question too. Another specimen with a skull roof was found that also showed the same erect crest after an investigation in 1993, meaning that this part of the crest was real and not a process of distortion, and that Chindalsaurus was distinct after all. After this, further observations of the skull especially from Jonathan Wagner, brought up as early as 2001, more assertively brought up much of the premaxilla being missing, and that they would have likely had a more typical crest seen in other Lembiosaurians, the clade of hadrosaurs they belonged to. He, alongside Albert Prieto Marquez, went about going back over the two specimens and published their results in 2013, alongside a new reconstruction which showed that the unicorn-like bone was actually the rear part of a larger cranial crest that started from the animal's snouts, that's while being a part of them didn't show off their full look. This more board-shaped look is more consistent with that of other Lambiosaurians, and as has been demonstrated from other studies into their biomechanics, wasn't only for show, since the nasal passages looked through the expanded premaxillary bones, which would have enabled them to produce low-frequency calls, which could travel long distances. For now at least though, the exact routes they would have taken is still speculative, since the relevant bones haven't been uncovered, though future finds will hopefully show what is missing amongst these most interesting of animals. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.